What's going on YouTube? This is NecroStevo and today we're going to have a team building tutorial. That's right, a slight peek behind the curtain into the weird labyrinth that is my brain when I'm actually building a Pokemon team as opposed to using random Pokemon the way that I am one to do. Now, uh, in this particular team building tutorial, I'm going to break it down into several different sections for you. Uh, of course, section number one, the reason you're building the team and choosing Pokemon to build around. Section number two, defensive cores. Section number three, offensive cores. And section number four, supporting and stabilizing your choices. Now, if you feel the need to leap forward at any point in this video to those different sections, feel free to do so. I will uh, put some annotations in the video so you know what time to jump forward to. Or at the very least, you can go down to the comment box and check out the timetable to jump forward to. If you do like this uh, tutorial, make sure you leave a like and uh, share the video. Um, but let's just start with the first thing when building a team. What are you building it for? Are you building the team for fun? Is it for a tournament? Are you building a team for someone else as a way to show your undying love? These are all important things to consider because they're going to dynamically change the type of team that you build. Now, if you're building a team for fun, then as long as your opponent is okay with whatever you're using, you can generally use whatever you want. Just let them know, hey, this is just for fun, and let's just have a good old time when I use six ditto against you, or something like that. Now, if you're building a tournament team, or a team used for a specific event, please know the rules of the tournament, or of the tier, or anything else like that, that you're entering in before you start building a team. Uh, it is very annoying to have to rebreed a Pokemon, or find a replacement, uh, and chain breed moves and all this good stuff when you could have just paid attention in the first place and gotten what you need to get. Now, if you are building a team for a specific t tournament or for a specific tier, it's important to know what types of Pokemon your opponents will likely be using. We're in the gracious position now where now we have statistics on Pokemon Showdown and Pokemon Online, and even after uh, VGC and ICLs where we can see the top Pokemon used or we can see the top 10 most popular Pokemon and their moves and things like that. We can literally go in and check out the statistics. Even if you don't have access to those resources because you don't feel like typing it into the internet, you can very easily just think back to the last 10 battles you have. Were there any common threads there? You probably saw Pokemon like Ferrothorn and Talonflame and Rotom Wash. Probably saw Mega Kangaskhan if you're playing VGC. You can think back to the things you've seen commonly, and those are the Pokemon you should keep in mind when you're building a team, so that when you have a team built, it's not the type of thing where you will forget those threats and then they walk all over your team. So let's just build a team today together, and we'll see how it goes. Alrighty, so for our team building purposes, I will be using the Pokemon Showdown Team Builder, just so you can kind of see a visual depiction of what the heck I'm talking about and it'll also help put the pieces together as far as the type of team that we're building and you can kind of see my 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 mindset here so a Pokemon that I've wanted to use very recently is Mega a Heracross I've been thinking about that Pokemon a good bit uh, we're just gonna title this team building tutorial team of teams and Pokemon. Alright, there we go. That's the team name. Eh, it's a work in progress. Now, most likely I'll be using this in an OU form. Uh, that's just because I tend to use whatever I want in OU anyway. This is going to be a real team. So with any team, it's good to choose one to two Pokemon that you're building the team around. Now they can be offensive Pokemon, they can be defensive, they can be mega Pokemon, they can be, oh I want to build an OU team around Stunfisk. You can choose whatever you want there, but focusing on one or two Pokemon instead of just picking Pokemon kind of randomly will allow you to not only be aware of the characteristics of that Pokemon, but it'll also make you more aware of the weaknesses of those Pokemon. So. We know that Heracross is a bug fighting type. Um, of course, with any Pokemon, they can all hold items, they can all have four moves, they can all have different abilities and different move sets and different natures and EV spreads and whoa, there's a lot to consider there. But what's important is to break it down. Now, with any Mega Pokemon, they have to hold 
the mega stone that corresponds to what they're mega evolving to. So Heracross kind of has his uh, hands tied as far as an item goes because he needs to use a Heracronite. Whenever you're choosing an ability, most Pokemon have at least two abilities, some have three because they have two abilities and then a hidden ability. With Mega Heracross, we can typically discount Swarm and Guts, and I'll tell you why. For most Pokemon, they have one ability that's going to be the ability that's going to be most useful for them in the majority of circumstances. Whenever you don't know what an ability does, you have a variety of resources to consider. Uh, go to Cerebi, go to Bulbapedia, or if you're on Pokemon Showdown or Pokemon Online, the little pop-up flavor text tells you what it does right there on the screen. We see here that Swarm and Guts and Moxie all are three different abilities Heracross can have. And Swarm, not very useful. Um, not only will we be Mega Evolving, so we, we probably won't see this at low HP. Um, when Heracross gets to low HP amounts, he's so weak to most priority, or he takes neutral damage from priority, that that's not that useful of an ability, unless you're substituting down. With Guts, that is actually a really good ability, but with Guts, you kind of are incentivized to get a status condition on you so that you'll get more attack. We don't want a status condition on our Heracross, because we'll be Mega Evolving. Um, so, we definitely don't want him to get burned, and getting him paralyzed or poisoned kind of ruins his longevity, because Mega Heracross has much better defensive stats. So we're actually going to go with Moxie on the off chance, again it's a small chance, but on the off chance that we get a KO with Heracross before Mega Evolving, and then we can Mega Evolving use that plus one attack to our advantage. Now specifically here, since we are using Mega Heracross, make sure whenever you're using a Mega Pokemon you're aware of the ability when it Mega Evolves, um, and that also applies to uh, whenever you're just building a team, the one or two Pokemon that you're building the team around, make sure you choose the ability that you want to build the team around, because some Pokemon will have different abilities, and then if you're just kind of breeding for the Pokemon and their nature, not keeping the ability in mind, you may get Hyper Cutter when you want Mold Breaker, or uh, an ability that you don't really want, such as Unnerve on something like a Pyro, when you're not even using it in doubles, you could be getting, using Rivalry and getting that attack boost, so, you know, there are things to consider there, so definitely keep those in mind. Now, since Mega Heracross specifically can only have Skill Link as an ability, which multiplies, of course, if you have a multiple hitting move, it makes a hit the maximum amount of times, uh, we're going to be definitely taking a look at all those multiple hitting moves. Specifically, um, we know that Pin Missile is going to be our go-to offensive move for his Bug-type stab, and I'm going to choose Close Combat for his physical uh, I'm sorry, his fighting type stab. For most offensive Pokemon, depending on the, your play style, it's good to choose moves that match the stab type of that Pokemon. That's the same type attack bonus, stab. I'm going to be using that word a lot this video. And you might have seen that if you ever um, go on to uh, any forum, such as Game FAQs talking about Pokemon or anything like that. You probably see the word stab a lot, but that same type attack bonus. Of course, that means that the Pokemon using the move is the same type as the move, and so it gets 50% more uh, power behind it, so it's 1.5 times as strong. Now here, Pin Missile and Close Combat are two very powerful moves for Mega Heracross to be using, and that leaves two move slots open for our Heracross. Now since we're building the team around Heracross, we kind of get to put whatever we want in those slots. Now, if Heracross were going to be one of, say, our offensive core or something like that, or in a baton pass chain, we might consider more support options on Heracross. But since I will be using our Heracross as kind of a, let's destroy as many things as we can as fast as we can, uh, or force a lot of switches, that means I just need to have as much coverage as possible. And we'll talk about a little uh, about coverage a little more later as well. But as far as coverage goes with Mega Heracross and his Skill Link ability, Rock Blast gives him very nice coverage against Fire types, Flying types, and other Bug types, which of course he is weak against Fire and Flying. And then that leaves one slot open. Pin Missile, of course, being a Bug type move, is going to be hitting Psychic types, it hits Dark types, and it hits Grass types. Uh, close Combat being Fighting type is going to hit Rock, Ice, um, steel and uh, and dark, of course, again. So we're doubling up on dark there. But so far, that's seven types that we're hitting. And then you add in the three more from Rock Blast. That's really good coverage. We're really only missing out on a few things there. 
that are notable. And so that last slot is definitely going to go to Bullet Seed, just because once again we can take advantage of the skill link ability and get a nice hit off on any opposing water types and opposing ground types that want to switch in there. Of course, doubling up on the coverage on rock type once rock types once, once more. Now, since I really want Heracross to be a, a, a hit it and quit it type Pokemon, Mega Heracross, of course, has a base 75 speed, so he's a little bit slower, but he gets a much higher attack and much higher defensive and especially defensive bulk. Um, for some reason, his special attack goes up 20 points as well. I really think that's a waste of 20 points, but I digress. Whenever you're looking at the types of EVs you want to put on the Pokemon that you're basing the team around, uh, it really depends on how you're going to choose to play that Pokemon. Now, most you can see here, especially in Pokemon Showdown, they'll give you a suggested spread based on the moves you choose. If you're new to it, I definitely recommend going with the suggested spread most of the time. That'll help you not only um, understand why that's the suggested spread, but also that'll uh, get your feet wet as far as um, before you go breeding things in the game. What's what spreads can and cannot work for you. Now, this is a bulky physical sweeper spread. That's pretty good. Uh, I'm actually going to go for max attack, max speed on my Mega Heracross with a plus speed nature, or I'm, I'm sorry, a plus attack nature, just because I, I, I already know kind of an idea of how I want to support my Mega Heracross. Now, even though I have him at max speed, uh, it's just not going to be enough on its own and that's where building a team around a Pokemon really comes into play. So we have our first Pokemon, Heracross. It is a bug fighting type that uses physical attacks. So what are the things that complement that? Well, one of the things that helps out a lot with that is going to be a defensive core. The way I think about a defensive core, it's kind of like a Triforce for those of you guys who have played Zelda. If you haven't played Zelda, imagine three triangles, of course, and the tops of each of the triangles are touching basically. So it leaves a triangle in the center and then there are three congruent, congruent triangles on each of the sides of that triangle in the center. They need to be able to interact and support each other but as a defensive core they need to handle different threats. Now what type of defensive core would you choose for the Pokemon that you have already chosen for your team? Well Mega Heracross being a bug fighting type has a lot of weaknesses um, most notably is his quadruple weakness to flying. Now that means basically as long as there is a Pokemon around that can use flying type moves, Talonflame of course probably being the most pressing Pokemon there with its priority Gale Wings, then it's going to be very difficult to use Heracross and it doesn't matter how fast Heracross is, it doesn't matter how uh, if Stealth Rocks are up, Talonflame will always come in and take out Mega Heracross basically. I think it has a chance to live if you run max HP max defense, but obviously that's not what we're running here, so we need to be able to address that. Now, choosing a defensive core is is really something interesting for a lot of teams. Um, since defensive cores really focus on the, your ability to take hits and to switch between threats, defensive cores, it's good to take into consideration abilities like Regenerator or Intimidate, things that can allow things to switch around more freely and take hits so that your offensive Pokemon can come in and dish out the hits. So just keep that in mind. Here, a Rock-type Pokemon is going to be a great support for Heracross in a defensive core, just because a Rock-type Pokemon can handle Talonflame relatively easily, even if it has Steel Wing, it's not going to do that much damage. And uh, it can, of course, hopefully set up Stealth Rocks to help support the team even more. So in this instance, a good Rock-type Pokemon might be something like Hyranitar. Uh, of course, Hyranitar could go Mega, but you typically only are only going to have one Mega Pokemon per team, especially in a singles battle, uh, because you can only Mega evolve. You can have more than one Mega Pokemon per team, but you can only Mega evolve one. So just keep that in mind. Now for this Hyranitar, it's probably going to need to be a more defensive one. Tyranitar is a rock dark type, so that means he's quadruple weak to fighting, which conveniently Heracross resists. He's also weak to water and grass and steel and fairy, so he's weak to quite a few things, but fortunately he's very, very bulky, so that's not as big of a deal. 
Now, Tyranitar's stats, of course, are still pretty leaning towards the physical side of things. He has a fantastic base HP stat. We definitely need him to be able to take hits from the likes of Talonflame, which should be no problem at all. Uh, we don't want him to get burned, really. Um, it's good to keep in mind the things that would kind of neuter the Pokemon that you have. Right now we have two physical attackers. They do work relatively well together, but the thing that we notice right away is that they're both going to be a little bit slow with Tyranitar with base 61 speed and Mega Heracross with base 75 speed. So when you're, you're making your teams, I'm kind of just snowballing here, but just taking things like that into account will help because later on when you're finished putting together your defensive core you will notice okay I'm, I'm running a little bit slow with my team so far let's choose something a little faster or in the alternative okay we have a lot of speed on this team but a lot of things are very frail let's let's choose something that can really tank and, and take some hits now in this specific instance I am going to be using let's go with leftovers on Tyranitar I would use assault vest but I think I really want to take advantage of um, some of the, the support options that he has access to. Now I have horrible luck with Stone Edge, so we're going to go with Rock Slide. And then Crunch, and this goes back to exactly with what we have with Heracross. Rock Slide and Crunch are our obligatory stab. You, of course you don't have to have those. But so far this just adds coverage to the team. Heracross has a Rock move as well, but with it being unstabbed and Heracross... Of course, switching out of many of the things that he hits with the Rock-type moves, such as Flying and Fire-types, Tyranitar might get a little bit more mileage out of using a Rock-type move. And of course, Heracross doesn't have a Dark-type move, so Tyranitar helps that um, as far as coverage on the team. That leaves a couple of open move slots there. Uh, I just think I'm going to throw Fire Blast onto him right now. And we'll also put ice beam on there for now as well and I'll figure out the EVs a little bit later when I see who else we want to add. Now we're still working on the defensive core here. Um, we could of course use protect there but since Tyranitar is pretty bulky on the specially defensive side especially with the sandstorm up um, we need something to take the, the hits that Tyranitar is weak to. Uh, you might be tempted to have a core where it's like Tyranitar and Florges or just like He's super bulky and she's super bulky, so it's going to be awesome. But you really don't want to have a core where they're both weak to the same things. For example, Tyranitar and Florges both share a weakness to Steel types. And so you introduce a team already that's pretty weak to Caesar in the first three members because Heracross, of course, doesn't really like taking bullet punches, and bullet punch decimates those two Pokemon. So a Pokemon that pairs well with Tyranitar is not only going to be able to take physical hits relatively well, special hits okay, um, but it's also going to at least be able to probably dodge some of those ground type moves or all those ground type moves and also, since Heracross can easily take fighting type moves that's not as important for this uh, type of core but um, I, I can certainly see uh, dodging some more of those being quite important there. Now of course Tyranitar is also weak to water and grass, and since Heracross is neutral to those, I think that those are going to be way more important to, to work around right now than um, ground-type moves. Now, water and grass are, of course, both resisted by grass-types, and that, of course, brings in another fire weakness, but fortunately, Ty Tyranitar resists fire, so maybe that's not that big of a deal. I am working really hard to resist using Venusaur right now, but why resist a good thing? Let's just go ahead and go with Venusaur, because we can. And we might end up coming back and switching out a Pokemon or two, but that's okay, that's what the team building process is for. Now why do I like Venusaur? Is because he is so very versatile. Uh, Venusaur, especially as a wall-type Pokemon, has some, um, um, or more tanky even, since I won't be using him as the Mega Form, uh, has some nice supporting options in the form of Leech Heat and Sleep Powder, and of course Sludge Bomb and Giga Drain are going to help round out his ability to not only stay alive but also it's going to help round out the coverage because we don't have any poison moves on the team so far. This also puts the nice little issue into the opponent's mind of which one of these three Pokemon is going to Mega Evolve. 
little mind games like that are fun. Zoroark can also serve that same type of purpose. Uh, but, you know, the options are there. Again, we're, I'm going to leave this right here open until we choose a, little, a few more of our teammates here. Because then I can really uh, show you guys what I mean by just either choosing the suggested spread or choosing something on your own. Now we have our defensive core here. I like it pretty well. Um, Venusaur, of course, being weak to Psychic, Flying, Fire, um, and then of course Tyranitar literally resisting or being immune to all of those, and uh, Heracross being resistant to the fighting, and Venusaur being resistant to the fighting that Tyranitar is weak to. It means we have a very good core here. Again, the issue that we have right now is speed. And you can patch up speed in two different ways. You can patch it up by making your opponent's Pokemon slower or making sure you choose faster Pokemon. So uh, a way that that might be alleviated here is by setting up Sticky Web, for example. Now let's see here. We have our defensive core. Next, let's choose an offensive core. We do have Heracross to really pile on some damage to the opponent there. But um, an offensive core, since Heracross is a little slower, things that I look for in an offensive core are the ability to provide momentum for my team that allow me to keep the pressure on my opponent and allow me to make decisions based off of what I see my opponent using that help me anticipate what they're going to do next. Those are going to be moves like U-Turn, Baton Pass, Volt Switch, uh, or even um, Healing Wish. Things like those specific types of moves allow you to switch between your Pokemon and damage the opponent at the same time, which prevents them from really getting their game plan set up. Now let's see here. I, one of the things I really do like to use is a Grass, Water, Fire core, and an offensive core. Hmm. A Pokemon that would be good for what we have so far would be a Water type for sure. Now we do have two physical type Pokemon so far, Heracross and Tyranitar and Venusaur is using special type moves. And so it's good to have a good balance between physical and special. Right now the metagame is very heavily slated towards a physical type metagame. Uh, so you want to make sure that your physical walls can definitely handle a little bit more of that pressure. But all it takes is one really strong choice specs Pokemon or something that's fast that has good coverage to really obliterate more physically oriented team so the approach I like to use is making sure that things are a little bit more balanced you can of course modify that based on what you think you like your play style or what you think you'll face but I like to use a more balanced approach now water type that has the characteristics of being um, able to provide some momentum and also have some offensive presence in the form of maybe you know stab water type attacks using baton pass is Vaporeon so Vaporeon has the nice ability of pairing nicely with Venusaur. Now he not only supplements Tyranitar's water weakness here alongside Venusaur with water absorption, now your opponent has to think is he going to switch to Venusaur or to Vaporeon and should I use an electric move or should I use a grass type move? You're forcing your opponent to consider what you're going to switch into. But also Vaporeon has the ability to use Baton Pass uh, if you level your Eevee up enough before you evolve into Vaporeon to switch back out into other Pokemon. Now, Vaporeon is moderately slow, so we're still running into that issue so far, so we may need a better Baton Pass or maybe someone who can pass some speed. Uh, but, maybe a slow Baton Passer is what you need sometimes because you need something to take a hit and then switch out to something so you can maintain the momentum but bring something in safely. Uh, baton passing things like Substitute are very, very useful, so we're definitely going to throw that on there. And Scald is such a nice move. And, hmm, I think Wish. Wish is going to be nice for some, for some Cleric support there. Alrighty. And I'm probably going to go ahead and throw a Timid Nature on there, just because that's the item, Steven, not the, uh, not 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 the thing there. We're gonna go in and make that timid before I forget. Man, it's hard to talk and do all this at the same time because this is breaking down my mindset that I normally just do in a couple of minutes. So yeah. So now we finally have a grass water core here. It would be nice to get a fire Pokemon in there, but we'll look at that in a minute here. Vaporeon can use Baton Pass to 
either pass on a substitute or get a wish to something a little bit more safely than bringing it in raw. Um, what is something that will pair nicely with Venusaur and Vaporeon as far as being a fire type? I really like the idea of a grass water fire core, especially with the kind of overlapping between the defensive and the offensive cores right there. Um, let's see. Fire. Well, we could always use Talonflame. <laughs> as much as I don't want to, Talonflame would actually fit in very well with what we have so far. Um, if only because Talonflame has access to the wonderful Gale Wings ability to give priority to his flying type moves, which means we have Brave Bird, and we have Flare Blitz. That's Flare. Flare types, even type. And then, of course, we have U-Turn, which is one of those moves that allow you to keep up that momentum, like I said earlier. And I'll I'll wait on the last move. I might use Will-O-Wisp. I might use Roost. Who knows, really? I might even use a Choice Band on this one. I don't know when I'm going to be there. And we have one last Pokemon left. So let's just take a second to back up. Um, the Pokemon we're building this team around is Heracross. And then, of course, we have Tyranitar, specifically because it can handle Talonflame, uh, being a Rock-type. And then, of course, Venusaur can switch in on a lot of Tyranitar's weaknesses, and Vaporeon can switch in on Venusaur's weaknesses while having the ability to baton pass away into the different Pokemon. Talonflame rounds out that offensive core by providing a very, very stout presence in two stab-type moves that we have not used yet in Fire and Flying, and also it can use U-Turn to keep momentum and offensive pressure on the opponent. Now, in the last slot, I typically, in the last one or two slots, I really like to use that as my glue Pokemon. Sometimes you just need a Pokemon that supports the team and provides a type of glue to the team that makes it a very cohesive package. It doesn't even necessarily have to be, the, be an obvious Pokemon. Sometimes you just need screen support or you really need a rapid spinner because you have several Pokemon weak to rapid spin. Or you need a Pokemon that can set up your own entry hazards. And, and in that last slot is where you'll really be able to hash out some of those things. So just looking at the team that we have now, we have no spinner, um, and of course a rapid spinner or a defog user can get rid of entry hazards on your side of the field so that when your Pokemon switch in, they don't take damage or take status effects from Toxic or Sticky Web. And of course, uh, we don't have anyone setting up any screens as far as light screen or reflect to lower the amount of damage our Pokemon take. We also don't have any magic bounce or taunt users to prevent entry hazards or setting up in the first place. So in that last slot, we, we can definitely have a little bit more support there just because this team, how it is now, is very strong. It's a little bit slow outside of Talonflame. Uh, but in this last slot, if we could get someone who not only supports the team in a, by making the opponent slower, but also can support the team by either getting rid of or setting up entry hazards. That's what we need in this last slot. It's too bad Talonflame can't get default, although I don't know why I'd use it on Talonflame if it could get default. Let's see. The first thing that comes to my mind for this last slot is actually Klefki. Now, Klefki has the wonderful ability Prankster, which allows it to go first when it's using non-attacking moves. That's going to be pretty important here because that allows us to use Thunder Wave and slow down opposing Pokemon to support Heracross and to a lesser extent Tyranitar in their pursuits to break down the opposing Pokemon's team. Uh, also, Klefki provides a very nice Steel type to this team. Um, we have two, uh, three Pokemon now weak to fire, but we have two Pokemon that resist fire. And then of course we have two Pokemon weak to ground now, and we have one Pokemon immune to ground. So that is definitely a pretty good ratio as far as being able to switch things in and out. We could throw an air balloon on Klefki, but uh, yeah. So I like what we have right now. And once you kind of have the six that you're kind of dealing with, then you can go back in and really start to play around with their movesets and their items and all that good stuff. So we have Talonflame, Vaporeon, Venusaur, Tyranitar, Heracross, and Klefki very very nice there I like that I might switch out Tyranitar because as the team is now Sandstorm will really just hinder several of our Pokemon besides Klefki uh, so we might need to switch that out to another rock type 
but we'll we'll see about that in just a moment here. Now then, we already have Heracross because he is who we were building the team around in the first place, so he's kind of set how he is now. Tyranitar, we said, was going to be more of our, our physically defensive um, wall kind of going on there, and so it may be prudent to give him a lot of HP and a lot of defense and a little bit of attack. Uh, of course, I have this one with Fire Blast and Ice Beam. I definitely will not be needing Fire Blast because we have Talon Flame. Um, and Ice Beam, that actually would be pretty nice because we don't have Ice Beam anywhere else on the team. And Ice Beam is so very nice for Dragon types. So, for this particular one, let's just try out randomly. We're going to give him... Um, I think you can breed Stealth Rocks onto Tyranitar. So we're going to give him Stealth Rocks. So Rock Slide, Crunch, Stealth Rock, and Ice Beam. And his move set, anytime you're running a mixed um, attacking type Pokemon, make sure that you choose a uh, uh, nature that doesn't lower any of the roles that they're trying to fill. In Tyranitar's case, he needs to take hits on both the physical and the special side, so we don't want to lower either of his defenses. And he's using both physical and specially offensive attacks, so we don't want to lower either of those. So that only leaves speed, but that is okay, as Tyranitar is a little bit slow. So we're going to be using a plus defense, uh, minus speed nature, which for Tyranitar is going to be somewhere around here. Alright, um, definitely want to give him max HP. I don't know why I put a plus there. And I'm just going to go ahead and go max defense too, because why not? Actually, hmm, he's going to be getting a good boost from the sand stream. No, yeah, this is for the purposes of the video that we're doing right now. Um, and we'll just do four right there. We'll see if I regret that later. Now for Venusaur, he can definitely utilize a black sludge item. Uh, whenever you're doing your items, item clause is a very popular... Uh, choice for rules and tournaments, and that just means that none of your Pokemon, none of your Pokemon can have the same item, um, so we might go back and switch something around so that we can have leftovers on Vaporeon, or we might have two leftovers, because this isn't really in any um, particular rule set here, uh, and Venusaur's EVs need to be more specially defensive, so in this case, I do kind of agree with the suggested spread, just because that's what I want my Venusaur to do. Uh, so, and notice how I did not go with the suggested spread on Tyranitar. Uh, that one suggests max attack, max HP, and then four in special attack, whereas I did max HP, max defense. Now for Vaporeon, this one suggests physically defensive, but since I will be utilizing Baton Pass, I am actually going to give him a good bit of speed, probably at least 116. That allows him to beat out all those guys who hit 207. And then we're going to give him a little bit of special attack. A lot of HP because he's using Wish. And then we can just put the remaining bit into his special attack there, I think. Or no. Maybe Vaporeon could take hits pretty well. Let's bump the special attack up to 285. And then we'll put the rest into defense. Just because we can, darn it. All right. So that's a random spread there, yes, but, you know, it's able to get catch the creep on some things. I do only have his one attacking move, a Scald. That may be an issue, but we'll leave it alone for now. Um, I have no other way to burn things on this team as of yet, so Will-O-Wisp is actually really nice. Uh, but Talonflame, in singles, Will-O-Wisp isn't as good just because you're not... Typically, you'll burn something and then it'll still kill you. So I think I'm actually just going to use a Roost on my Talonflame and give it... I really don't like Life Orb on Talonflame, but I, I could see the ability to heal it actually working out here because of Vaporeon. Um, yeah, I can see giving it a Life Orb. I don't know whom else I would give a Life Orb on this team, so why not Talonflame? Uh, you do have to be careful when you use items like Life Orb just because you are you're utilizing your Pokemon's HP as a resource to do more damage. So definitely, I'm using it here very riskily, because Talonflame already does so much damage to itself through recoil. So we'll see if that actually works out or not. 
Uh, of course, the cleft key on the end there, I said the, rain, the main reason we wanted to use him was for Thunder Wave to paralyze opponents. And of course, cleft key also gets access to spikes, which will be pretty nice there just to set up if we get an opportunity to. Foul play is good just to cause damage to the opponent. And of course, um, I think that's cleft key's only... Well, actually, I think I'm going to use play rough just because we don't have any fairy type attacks on the team. Um... And then right now, are we susceptible to one type of attack or another? Mm. Let's see. Electricity hits these two, ground hits those two, fire hits these three. Tyranitar will be putting up a sandstorm. I don't think I want to use any of those really, to be honest. Um, I'm going to do something weird that I've enjoyed doing before, and that's using Torment. With priority, it can be very annoying. Alright. Uh, and just because I've already used Rock Leftovers, we'll use a Rocky Helmet. And uh, Clef Key here. We'll make it physically defensive. Um, and, you know, give him 4 more HP for the play rough there. So this is what we have. And let's now go get a battle, just to see how things went with the team.